What's going on everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona and today we are going to make a video about the best places to live in Arizona. We've made videos like this in the past, but this is going to be even more refined and more dialed in to really kind of answer this question that was specifically asked by Broderick Vaughn. He says, Peoria, Mesa, Phoenix, which city is better for families in terms of safety, schools, things to do for the family and housing costs? So we've already made most of our videos based on just raw statistics. This is going to be some statistics, but also, you know, my personal perception of what I've seen and observed to be the case after living in Arizona for many years. Um, as you know, I grew up here and then I was gone in the military and then I came back. And so what it was like back then before I left and what it was, what it's like now, it's really kind of similar, but, um, that's what this video is going to be about. If you guys, like this and you want to keep up with us on our Facebook group where you can ask any question and our community will try to answer that or you can ask the questions right here on YouTube and I will field them and answer them right you know in videos like this from time to time so yeah you can join our group right here you can see the Facebook group is growing it's getting bigger we've got almost 700 well we've got 773 people now there so lots of stuff going on in here. Great way to keep up with us. You can click that link in the citation and you can subscribe to this channel. So let's go ahead and dive in here and talk about the things you need to know about what the best cities are. So I'm going to give you the list right now. We're going to go through it really quick and you can either continue to keep watching what I'm going to talk about as I go into details or you could just take this list and run. Okay, I'm going to say in no particular order, but... Oro Valley, Gilbert, Fountain Hills, Prescott, Scottsdale, Ahwatukee, Queen Creek, Sahorita. So I've given you guys this list here and I'm going to now go into the uh, details about each one of these places. And if you are excited to get this information, please do like the video to show your support for this channel and what we do. And also do share this with your friends and or family who are also considering moving to Arizona and want to know this information. So let's go ahead and dial this in here. So Sarita, it is in the Tucson metropolitan area. Okay, so if we just go in here, it is about 10 to 15 miles south of Tucson. It's got a population of about 25,000 people. And it's actually got a really affordable median home price of around about $170,000 per home, which a lot of people would find to be pretty favorable. Now, being that it is a former military uh, setup outpost, it does have a history from the gunnery ranges and whatnot, but now it's been settled as a more civilized community that's not so military based, but it is still close to the military industrial complex that Tucson is known for. So you're going to have places like Titan Missile Museum and uh, whatnot around there. Now, you're also going to be close to a casino if you're living here. So if you have an addiction to casinos, keep that in mind. The uh, Desert Diamond Casino is right down the road from you. Anyway, so that's basically what we're going to talk about with Sarita. So if you're considering that uh, moving to Tucson, you're also going to look north to Oro Valley. Now, Oro Valley is a place that a lot of people really enjoy. They think it's beautiful. As you can see, it's this desert oasis. Kind of in a way looks like Palm Springs, but it's not close to Los Angeles. It's close to Tucson. Oro Valley is one of those places that is up and coming, and we've made videos specific to Oro Valley. People wanting to move there because they, th they see the beauty. It's mostly a golfing community. If you're an older person, 55 and older, you might also really enjoy Oro Valley. So these are two places in Tucson that people uh, really should be considering looking at. There's many other places around there. You have the Catalina Foothills and anywhere around the Catalina Foothills, you're going to get beautiful home communities. But Oro Valley and Sarita, Oro Valley in the north, Sarita in the south. Now, moving into the Phoenix metro area, I'm going to say Gilbert is probably going to be a great place for you to consider, especially if you have a family. And this is going to be for people who like the, the, the suburb or the suburban or city life, I guess you could say, uh, in particular being close to Phoenix Metro. So it's got all the modern conveniences of a big city, whereas Sarita and Oro Valley, they're kind of rural, really rural suburban towns. This is a suburban Phoenix uh, metropolitan city that is right in the mix of it all while you can still be in the city, but also 
feel out of the grid. It's really a friendly place. I live in Queen Creek right next door to this place. Uh, median home price here is going to be about double what you're going to get in Sarita. So if you're if cost and, and, and chilling out is going to be a thing, then go to Tucson area because the homes are cheaper in that area. But if lifestyle is really important to you and you don't mind paying $325,000 to $330,000 uh, for a home, which really, if you're coming from California, is like, that's a drop in a bucket. A $330,000 home in San Diego gets you like a, a two-bedroom condo, right? In, in Phoenix Metro, you get a $330,000 home in a, a big, nice beauty, you know? Okay, so that's Gilbert. Check out Gilbert, guys. They got it. They got the, in my opinion, in the Southeast Valley, they also have the best downtown area. It is small, but it's emerging. It's coming around. It's growing. Beautiful city. I mean, Gilbert, I, I have, I've done a couple of driving tours of Gilbert. I should really do a couple more showing off just how beautiful this place really is. It's a lot more green than some of the other previously established Arizona communities. So definitely add Gilbert. Look at, they've got a farmer's market here. They're showing off. Um, the next town that I'm going to talk about is going to be one of my personal favorites, especially as a kid. I'm going to show you um, where this is here. So you're going to go into Scottsdale and you're going to head over towards Fountain Hills. So Fountain Hills is called that because of a big fountain. It used to be the world's largest fountain. Let's see if we can even get a picture up close on this. Uh, let's see, do they have 360 degree view of the fountain? Well, either way, um, Fountain Hills, as a kid, this was one of my favorite places to go. The big fountain is great. Um, that's where it's at. This is just a gorgeous community and uh, big old homes up here all up along the, this ridge line. It is going to be a little bit more expensive. This might be, you might be pushing 500000 to a million dollars, depending on how far up into the foothills you're going to go into uh, Fountain Hills. But again, a casino right nearby Fort McDowell. I really like a Fountain Hills. It's out. It's it's out there. It's further out there than say Gilbert. I mean, you're going to be really out of the me the mega grid of Phoenix because you got to go across the McDowell Mountains in order to get to Fountain Hills. You can see on this map. Go look on the map yourself if you also want to get some insight. But Fountain Hills is going to be for people with a little bit higher budget. And if we go right up the road here, more closer to the city, comes to our next uh, best place. Well, some would say this is the premier destination to live in all of Phoenix. It's going to be Scottsdale. Scottsdale is at the base of the McDowell Mountains. It's really a beautiful uh, high desert enclave. They've got Troon, Troon North. If you got the big money, you go to North Scottsdale. If you really want peace and serenity, you go to North Scottsdale, but you got to have big money. And that's what it's going to look like in your backyard, basically. Now, downtown Scottsdale is going to be a lot more affluent. Uh, the further you go into Scottsdale, and we've made a couple videos about this, uh, there's a video on our channel, which I can post a link to also at the end of the video. Um, you're going to have Scottsdale Road, which is going to be basically the uh, the big premier area. But once you get past Shea, you come into Ganey Ranch and McCormick Ranch. And then over here, you have Paradise Valley, which is considered a really, it, it's its own city. But I would say Paradise Valley is probably more a part of Phoenix. So I'm going to say that really Scottsdale and Paradise Valley are kind of the same. If you're considering Scottsdale, go check out Paradise Valley. Now areas around Scottsdale, there's also East Scottsdale, which is going to be off of Shea. So when you get to Scottsdale Road and Shea, go east. That'll take you to Fountain Hills if you want to do all three, Paradise Valley, Fountain Hills, and Scottsdale in a day or in a, in a trip. But these are for the big money people, so you got to have big money for this, okay? You can get nice condos, you can get nice um, houses, property, all that in Scottsdale. It is probably the premier spot. And then they have a nice nightlife, which is going to be a little bit further down, though. So if you're living in North Scottsdale and you like to go out, you're going to be pretty far away from Old Town. Paradise Valley, if you need to be in the grid and you need that serenity that Scottsdale provides, but you don't want to live in North Scottsdale 20 to 30 minutes away from you know, the affluent areas, the Biltmore and downtown, then you're going to go to Paradise Valley, Arcadia District, okay? That's Arcadia right there. It's all around the Camelback Mountain. I'm providing this information for you because this is the stuff you're going to want to know when you're looking for homes in Scottsdale. So take notes because what I just told you there is very crucial information, especially for those of you who are looking to go to Scottsdale. Now, if you want to move to the Phoenix metro area and you're looking for a pretty nice place that's 
connected to the city. It really is. It's Ahwatukee. Ahwatukee is close to the city. I'll show you exactly where Ahwatukee is. It's over here. So this is Ahwatukee. It's up against the um, the mountains over in South Mountain. Right here, you have I-10. So from I-10, you go west, okay? And you're going to be basically... So you're going to be basically south of the US-60 on I-10, south of Tempe and Guadalupe. But this is really a beautiful area. I mean, I think that if I could, if I had it to do all over again and I had the money, it, it is a little bit more expensive, I think, than Gilbert, but it's really, it's really nice. Let me just show you guys what it looks like around Ahwatukee. You can see with these beautiful mountains. Um, it's nice. I mean, it's close to Tempe. Uh, I would really recommend taking a look, especially if you don't have the big budget. I mean, it is a little bit older, but Ahwatukee is really a nice area. I mean, they have newer homes, obviously newer home communities in there. These roads look like they're just tore up, though, from all that Arizona heat. Um, but Ahwatukee is so close to this town. It's, I would say it's got pretty low crime. Uh, the closer you are to the uh, South Mountain, South Mountain, the better off you'd be. You know, you've got these golf clubs, golf courses. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I recommend taking a look at uh, Ahwatukee, to be honest with you. It's, um, I mean, what, what I'm saying is, yeah, it's good. Ahwatukee's pretty, pretty amazing. And then there's going to be Queen Creek, which is now where I live, which I don't have a problem with Queen Creek. Uh, you know, I said I would rather, I would probably consider moving to Ahwatukee if I had it to do all over again. Um, yeah, probably, honestly. I mean, it would be between Scottsdale and Ahwatukee, and I'd probably be... I'd probably be more inclined to go up into Ahwatukee and look a little bit further. But, uh, yeah, so Queen Creek, the, the thing about Queen Creek, if, if you move to Queen Creek, it's great. It's up and coming. It's got a, it's got a, a lot of um, opportunity moving forward. But it's really far out there compared to, down, compared to say, Ahwatukee. So Queen Creek is better than Ahwatukee because it's newer, but it's so far out there. There's not much out here yet. Because you can see all these farms, they're like filling in each one of these grids as they're moving further out towards Queen Creek. But if, if suburban lifestyle and slower pace and less traffic is a big thing for you, then Queen Creek is going to be there. That's why it's on this list. You can see Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport is now an international airport and that just recently happened. So there is big plans for this area. It's just going to take 10 to 15 years to get there. But you're in a pretty good situation if you're considering Queen Creek and you like being rural, but still connected close enough to the grid. I mean, just look. Here's Queen Creek. Okay. Here's Phoenix. We're talking a, probably about an hour to an hour and a half to get there. So it's something to keep in mind. Whereas Ahwatukee right here in Phoenix. So you can see Ahwatukee is so much closer, right? And then if you were to just go bounce up here at Fountain Hills to Phoenix, that's way more rural and built on the mountains than Queen Creek. But uh, some people like to build these big homes. And then you can see North Scottsdale up here, Pinnacle Peak, True North, which is probably the most beautiful. But look how far away it is from Phoenix. I mean, it's really out there. But you also have to have you also have to be playing with some big money in order to get out there. This whole west side of Phoenix is all right. I guess if you needed to move to the west side of Phoenix, don't. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, do what you want to do. But if you wanted to move to the west Phoenix, you could probably go... Mm, I don't know, out here, surprise, this this whole area right here. But look, I mean, you saw Queen Creek has like, you know, greenery around, you know, if things grow, that tells you something. Things out here don't grow. This is moonscape. It's really hot. There's a reason why the landscape looks like that out over here in the West Valley and not like that in the East Valley, okay? So there, there's a big push to get people to go West, but most of the people who go West are like, ah, why did I go West? Why didn't I go East? There you go. So I'm just giving you a little bit of information on that. But places like Vistancia are really nice. I mean, you, you want a housing community in West Phoenix. I mean, I would consider Vistancia, honestly. Check out Vistancia, actually. So that's really going to round out our list uh, in in the south southern part. And then if we go north and you want to live in northern Arizona, probably the best destination that I would tell you to consider is going to be Prescott. So Prescott, I've mentioned this a couple times. I really like Prescott. It's high desert, northern Arizona, uh, two and a half, two hours away from down or downtown Phoenix, probably. Uh, Phoenix Metro is maybe an hour and a half away. You're going to really like Prescott. 
If you're into the colder climates and the pines, the ponderosa pines, that's what most people consider uh, great about Prescott. It's it's cooler. It's not as hot, but I mean, it's it's it is a smaller town environment. You are going to be. I would recommend you to be a great at an outdoors person if you're going to move out here because the big city life is two and a half hours away, two hours away, depending on traffic. I mean, you can see. I mean, here's here's Prescott. And here is Phoenix. You can see it's quite a big difference. And the other places around Prescott that you may consider are going to be Yavapai Hills and Prescott Valley. If you want to go really far north, the Chino Valley, that's where you can get some property. And uh, yeah, I mean, this whole area, if you start moving more east, you get up into Jerome, Clarkdale, Cottonwood, Co Cottonwood Verde Village, Cornville, and then you head over to Sedona. Sedona is great, but... We're going to leave that one off the list, but it could get honorable mention. A lot of you already like, ooh, Sedona. But people don't want Sedona to get too big. And if I just hype it up, you know, people will start moving there. So I'm going to say Prescott because Prescott's still pretty close to Sedona. I mean, it's an hour drive away. So you're in good, good shape to get over there if you need to. Anyways, guys, thanks to everyone who's liked these videos. Share this video with your friends and family who are considering moving out here. And hopefully this answers the question that was asked about uh, Peoria Mesa Phoenix. I mean, yeah, those aren't on this list. But if I had to pick Broderick, if you're still watching, I would say you would go with either Peoria or Mesa. Phoenix is just down to the whole Phoenix area, I would say, is a little bit more expensive but also or well it's not too expensive but it's just it's, it doesn't have the vibe that peoria and mesa have and it just depends do you want east phoenix or west phoenix between mesa and peoria but if i had to pick between peoria and mesa i would say either east mesa or peoria like towards vistancia so hope that answers the question and this goes over the best places to live in arizona in terms of family and housing costs and all that bang for your buck quality of life that list that i just gave you is really it's a variety of different prices, but all really safe and pretty, pretty good places to live. And watch any of these other videos if you guys like.